just getting my pencil here um, in scribbling, just scribbling a face. It'll all change, but just kind of, and I do have a little reference, I'll show it to you in a minute, but I'm just kind of scribbling in the face and the features, very, very loose using my um, 0.3 pencil. Just something to get started on. The ear. Okay, so I scribbled a face, and now what I'm going to do is, looking back in my experiment here, I'm going to probably use my smaller charcoal. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. But I thought it would be fun to show you what you can do with it. Burnishing that in there. Okay, I'm going to go back in with my pencil. Just do the scribbly technique with the features. Don't want to lose that scribbly line. Now you can use a reference or you can just do uh, a piece out of your head. I always like to look at something. It just helps me start. And so I've, I've used this model for that. But it's just a starting point. I'm not going to be... I, my my paintings, my portraits never, ever, ever end up looking like the reference. I just use them to get me started, maybe just to get the features in place and the lighting. The, the lighting is a lot of what I use my reference for. Okay, then I'm going to get some watercolor. I need to grab another brush. Oh, I wanted to tell you, this is a sidebar, about these watercolors are by Jaster Stardust. And I believe they're on, he's on Etsy. And his colors are really, the only problem is that he doesn't always have, it's not consistent, the colors he has. Like, I don't even know if he would have this group of colors uh, or this one. But they're so yummy, and and some of them are not quite translucent. They're a little bit, um, they're a little bit opaque. Um, but I just, I love these colors. I, so I just wanted to show you, and if you just want to take a look at his site on on Etsy Jasper Stardust. They're handmade watercolors and they're beautiful. And maybe I'll use some of that in, in this, but I think I'm gonna go just go back to my burgundy yellow ochre. Have my water by me. And I'm taking a 
this kind of a brush so I can do some. Oh, I forgot. Oh my goodness. I forgot the best thing using the walnut oil before I do that. I knew there was something there was something I was forgetting. Okay. Let's see what happens with that. Okay, like maybe like under here, underneath the chin, it will be darker, so Love, love, love this stuff. Even if it doesn't make a big color change, just that little area there. It's so beautiful. But then you can mix it in with the charcoal and get that beautiful shading. I think... Oh, I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to use this. I have a ton of these. These are my favorite brushes. These quarter inch angular brushes. I've been using them from, from day one. So I just want to get into some areas. So I'm going to use this. I'll just get another one for watercolor. But this way you can. It's a little easier to move. To move this stuff around. And you know what I'm gonna get I wanna get some regular charcoal so I can go in there and do the eyes. I'll be right back. Okay. I have a feeling this piece is gonna be spooky. I mean if you're using techniques that make things look like mold. Uh, I think you're going to get kind of a spooky face. Oh, that makes the charcoal really nice. See, now what I'm doing is I'm expanding on what I did last week. I didn't use a charcoal pencil before. And now I'm using it. Just in certain areas. Or maybe more areas. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Kind of nice shading. The charcoal and the oil. I think it's very nice shading. downstairs so if you hear if you hear walking um, they're walking above me that's the sound that's what happens when your studio is in the basement okay that's looking really cool Like 
I'm leaving that nose alone. I love how that's shaded with just a little bit of charcoal, not a lot. Water's coming down. <laughs> Let's see if I just what happened here. Let's see if that's coming through the other side. Yeah, a little bit. doing the scribbling that I did with the pencil. I'm using the charcoal. But I'll go back to the pencil for sure. Okay, so then the next thing is I'm going to get the watercolor, the burgundy yellow ochre, Putting a heavy dose of that color in there. Okay, I just want to try one of these colors just so you can see. This color is really pretty. a little bit. Okay. So that's that part. And then let's see what... Oh, okay. So now I go in. I go in with the gesso. And then I'll repeat a lot of this stuff again. gray.
thick with that gesso. Oh, I like how it's kind of ghosting that eye. Yeah, I wasn't liking it. After a, I'm going, oh no, I'm this is ruined. And now I think the gesso is going to save the day. I might have to speed this up because I don't want these videos to be more than like 20 minutes. So, but you see the techniques I've been using. So, okay. Yeah, I was able to still kind of save that nose. Okay, I'm speeding this up because I want this to be a short video. All I'm doing now is I'm just getting the my gesso with my finger and rubbing it into this substrate. As you see, I'll get I get a little over um, bored with the gesso. And I'm not super pleased with that. So I'll see, I'll show you how I rem remedy it. I'm going to get some pencil marks back into her face. And I wasn't really crazy about that color of the lips on there. It just um, didn't seem to work. So I'm kind of getting rid of her mouth with the, the gesso right now. Okay, and then going in with my pencil. And just redoing the mouth. I like the nose and I like the eyes. I'm fine with that. I'm just not crazy about the mouth. See, I'm looking at my page. I'm looking at some of the techniques to remind me. That's, and that's why it's so good to have a journal and do these little exercises and then do just do a, a little project to, you know, to show, you know, to have a record of what you can do with some of these techniques. And I usually do a portrait. I may do an animal or maybe a flower or something like that later on. Uh, but right now this is my, this is my go-to. So I'm just doing my pencil marks. So you hold the pencil down a little bit and give this little, it's almost like a tick mark or uh, it just m makes the line a little more interesting. I've been doing this forever. You know, the gesso is a little bit wet because as you'll see when you work on different surfaces if you have a if you have a, um, a fibrous surface like this watercolor paper it's going to take longer to dry but if you have a more slick um, substrate a slick um, journal it it reacts a little differently and dries faster and I'm going to do some inserts with some of my uh, paper that I really, really love from my moleskin journal. I love that paper. I do paintings on it. Okay, now I'm using my brush to put some gesso on there. And then you're, you'll see at the end of this, when I stop filming this, this video, 
I will, well, I'll show you what happens because it was a little bit too white and needed some dark contrast. So I went in there. Well, I'm starting to, I'm starting to go in there with the um, charcoal pouch. to get that kind of moldy effect. Okay, let's, what I'm missing, what am I missing? Ah, okay. So what I'm here, I'm showing you the final project and I added quite a bit of the black charcoal and really, really punched it out. And I'm so much happier with it because it was just too light. It just needed too much contrast. And I used the pouch around the eyes up there and you know underneath the chin and just a little bit under the lips and it just made it a lot more mysterious and then I also added the white of the eye that that little glint of white that uh, makes the eye pop so I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next week